saber-tooth felids have blade-like upper canines, much larger than those of extant big cats. But exactly how they use them for killing their prey has puzzled scientists for decades. One key to understanding how saber-tooths killed is their neck anatomy, because neck muscles contribute to the biting action. Late derived saber-tooths from the Pleistocene, like Smilodon or Homotherium, had longer and more muscular necks than normal cats, and they used their neck muscles to help drive their upper canines into the flesh of prey. But the neck anatomy of early saber-tooths has been poorly known until now, thanks to discoveries made at the Miocene site of Cerro de los Batallones in Madrid, Spain, we now have a rich sample of neck vertebrae of the early Machairodontin Machairodus afanistus. Examining the bones is not enough. Dissecting extant felids helps us to understand how the musculature of the neck would work in the extinct species. The results are surprising. The atlas or first cervical vertebra of Machairodus resembles that of normal cats, lacking the specialized morphology seen in later saber-toothed species. But the remaining vertebrae, second to seventh, are long, with prominent muscle insertions, like those of the later saber-toothed. This is unexpected, because the morphology of the atlas is very important for the saber-toothed killing bite, and Machairodus already had very flattened upper canines with serrated margins, so one would expect a more specialized atlas morphology. This mixture of ancestral and derived features is an example of mosaic evolution. It thus seems that the adaptation for the saber-tooth bite was less refined in Machairodus than in later relatives, but it was effective enough to make it an enormously successful predator. <laughs>